Okay, so now we are going to try to understand what it means to have a good mesh. We don't, we don't want just to have a good mesh because it's pretty or anything like that. It's because a good mesh gives us pro properties, pro more, more likely stress but not exclusively, that we can believe in. All right, so that's, that's why we need to focus on, uh, on uh, having a good mesh, a well-converged mesh, so that the properties we can we can believe. So first of all here, I just wanted to point out, I was uh, faffing around and I modified the element size for no real reason really, but uh, I was not able to go back to the default. So if, I, if you want to, to have re numbers that are similar to what I'm doing here, and if you're uh, copying that, change your mesh to 5 millimeter. Keep the element order to uh, program control. Or if you, you, you can change it to quadratic if you prefer it to be exactly the same thing here. Yeah. Uh, this quadratic or linear refers to uh, the shape functions in uh, inside the elements. Again, something we see in the lecture that uh, tells you whether the function is a parabola or, or, or um, well, or parab paraboloid actually in, uh, in 2D or, uh, or just a plane. Okay. Anyway, so obviously and obviously uh, quad quadratic is uh, allows for finer mesh, uh, well, distribution of properties inside the element, better shape function, and program control here will automatically use quadratic. Fine. So let's have a look at. Apologies. Let's have a look at the system here. So what have we got? Let's have some results. So as mentioned, that we are, we are looking at the stress. Yeah. Sorry. In the plate, so we are applying um, five kilonewton that way, so ten kilonewton in total. Don't forget the symmetry, and the cross section area is one millimeter times one hundred millimeter. So when we divide that, we should obtain hundred megapascal. So let's look at the units megapascal. Okay, fine. And what maximum is three or seven? Here. And uh, we are not totally surprised. We have a fact. Well, we expect a factor of around uh, three. I mean, we can calculate it. Calculate it. Sorry, we can use charts to obtain it. But a factor, uh, a stress contortion factor of uh, of three uh, at that all is not especially shocking in itself. But how good is that value? Well, a quick check. That's always decent. Is to check the unaveraged average value, and that's exactly the same. So that that is a very good sign. That is a very good sign. Now it's fine. We have the values here. We have got we have got the color chart, so that gives us some ideas. But it's not that precise. What we can, what I like doing is to add some probes. Okay, so you put a probe and you put it here, for instance. So I put a probe here, 95 something here, 100. Yeah, so not shocking at all. Slightly less here because there is less cross section area to take the load. And uh, yeah, I, I'm quite pleased. Uh, I'm quite pleased with this value. But still, how accurate is is that value? Uh, average and average don't change very much here. So that's, uh, I said, a very, very good sign. Something else, and we discussed that in the tutorial to do by hands, which is similar in 2D but slightly different shape, the fillet on that, in that other one. We, uh, may, I make you uh, include the strain energy. So strain energy essentially, essentially uh, calculates the energy difference between the uh, average and unaveraged stress strain uh, distribution. So a few millijoules is, is another sign of, uh, of quality, but and again, everything happens happens here. So that's fine. The strain energy is useful uh, to, 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 to have a quick check, but I also quite like personally to, to look at the different, the average and unaveraged. Uh, at the end of this video, we are we will create deliberately a really bad mesh to um, to see to see something. So how is my maximum stress really three or seven? Or how close? How close is that from uh, the, well, the real, real stress? Well, we don't know. We, in fact, we can we cannot get the real, real stress. Uh, this is an approximate an approximate method for these elements. What we can do, however, is increase uh, the num the, den the mesh density. Now we could increase everywhere, but that would be a bit pointless. Not much is interesting is happening there. The interesting things are happening here. So, in the uh, tutorial, 
you are asked to add, I think, um, you, you can add uh, some mesh, some mesh sizing, and you can size it around a certain point, and you can control that manually if you want. And that, that works absolutely, absolutely, absolutely nicely. That's absolutely fine. So uh, there is another way. There's another way which can be helpful as well, sometimes a bit faster, and that consists in inserting. A convergence under a property so you can have different convergence for different properties so I'm going to uh, what I care the most is that is my uh, x axis normal stress I'm going to add convergence under it right so convergence has got some uh, some tools so what does it tell me it does not a, it I have a choice of maximum minimum I want to yeah I don't want to convert the maximum that's what I care about allowable change 20% what well, that tell me that it will stop when uh, the when he, so he's, he's going to try to refine the mesh, and we'll see that later. And automatically, and if the new value is less than twenty percent, it's going to be it's going to be happy. So yeah, let's see what. Let's give it a spin, okay? And it gives us uh, an history and, and and some total data. So let's solve. Okay, running around, doing it's ch it's changing the, in the background. It's changing the mesh, very likely near the maximum, and it gets a new value. Aha. So the new value is, so it went from 307 to 311, and which is a difference of 1.15%, 1.60%, which is obviously less than 20, so it stopped. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, that's great. So already we see that there was no way that uh, I sh we could write uh, the maximum stress as 307.82. The 0.82 is completely meaningless, completely meaningless. Okay, and actually this is an important an important point. When you write a report, the report is going to be obviously um, checked by uh, an analysis checker or a price manager or something. And if they see uh, values of stress given with frivolous accuracy, instantly they are going to disregard. Uh, your analysis. Even if you have done a lot of good stuff, check very carefully, and so on and so on. It's a simple fact of giving an accuracy that is completely irrelevant and meaningless, invalidate your work in the eyes of a, of a competent engineer. You should be aware, it's very, you should be aware of the accuracy that your uh, techniques provide you. And this is not limited to, to um, uh, simulations. When you do a calculation, your accuracy is going to be limited by the built-in accuracy of the data you are using. For instance, a Young's modulus is accurate to, to what? Plus a few, plus minus a few um, gigapascal. That's usually one or two. It Dep depends. <laughs> Rule of thumb is around 5% on experimental data, which is there are exceptions, of course. Things can be done much more, much more accurately, but be aware that your accuracy is not what you think it is. It's not because the computer gives you uh, a lot of decimal points, but the real accuracy is way worse than that. That being said, I'm not happy with that. I want to do uh, try to go further, so I'm going to reduce the accurate, uh, allowable change to 0.3% and spin it again. Right, so keep going. So I'm going to try to uh, to improve that. It solves a bit longer because there are more elements. Actually, you can see the number of elements increasing. Um, it's telling you. So my third, my third go has got what? My third go has got 441 elements and 1400 nodes, and it's starting to increase the next time around uh, 14. I can, I can solve again. It's a bit longer. Still not very long at all. Improving, no, still not. I will give it. Actually, let's have a quick look first to what uh, what, the, what it looks like. You can, as you can see, it has automatically increased the density of nodes around the interesting bits, and it does it in a, in a smart way. Often, I quite like that uh, that algorithm. You know, it, it works quite uh, quite well. You can do it by hand, as I said, but that's a bit that can be a bit more uh, more tedious, right? Let's give it 
a last uh, a last a last round so it's not i said three percent not possible no just no, not one three percent is completely doffed all right uh, one percent would be way good enough i'm only doing it here for educational uh, purposes okay let's so let's let's do that five percent would be pretty good enough as well and five percent of, of 300 is quite a lot Okay, so you can see how it really looks like it's uh, it's converging, and now it's uh, total 315. Yeah, possibly. So maybe that's good enough. Maybe that's good enough. Ah, it's probably good enough. 314, 315. I'm happy with that. I can't believe that. Let's have a look at the unaveraged. And obviously, yeah, it does the same uh, same uh, same value. Something else. So that's that's quite nice. But something else you can do is analyze that data in Ansys. So you can. Right click on convergence and click on export export text file. Give it a name. Let's give it 5.3 just for uh, the trade matter at the stage. You might give it a better name, save it. And what's, what's nice as well is that it will also it will also open automatically um, a spreadsheet. So and if it doesn't, well you can always you can always open it. Okay, so that this and you can use a spreadsheet to uh, to plot data in a, in, a, in a better way. So if I do that, I'm going to copy it here. Here, I'm also, and what I will want to plot is a number of elements uh, as a function of the number, sorry, uh, as a as trace function of the number of elements. So insert, and I want a scatter plot. There you go. And you can see it converges very nicely. Now, be aware that this plot is really, I'm oh, sorry, it's the origin here is starting at three, 300. So if we change the origin from zero, yeah, sorry, if we change the start, the y axis uh, from zero instead of um, something enormous, you can see it's already <laughs> almost converged. So this is a, this is a very good, this is a very good, um, very good, very good, uh, mesh already giving some some very decent values function i like consists in plotting as inverse of the number of nodes sometimes you can obtain some average uh, node uh, uh, size and that can be very similar so let's see if we plot that We plot it again, scatter plot. Can't, I quite like it because that gives us some sort. You can see that when the inverse of the number of nodes, so that so that means when the number of nodes toward, tends towards infinity, the inverse tends towards zero, and that really can give you um, a trend line. So, and if you add a trend line to that, for instance, uh, let's uh, do like we're putting over the two here. Close. Display action chart. So I would, um, like it could be maybe uh, all the three, whichever, but we can, uh, you can extrapolate it and you can get a value of close enough uh, for infinite. This is a bit dangerous, but it, it can be quite helpful. All right, so no worries here. We have nice, uh, nice convergence. And our model gives uh, good uh, good values so, so where do you stop well it depends what you can afford it depends how complex your system is here this is a very simple system with not many elements so we, we can converge it absolutely but otherwise well usually it depends what your accuracy is um, is needed for your uh, for your uh, for, for your for your system but again never ever ever give a value in a report to decimal point megapascal right so next we are going to actually check what happens when we use we deliberately force a bad uh, a bad mesh because that, that, that that's what actually is a, a very good mesh we, even from the beginning okay let's see a few minutes